At night, a woman is running in fear through a forest. She is trying to scream, but her mouth is covered with tape. Her arms are also tied behind her back. Two brothers, Henry and Richard Kraus, with bows, are chasing her in the forest. The other brother, Julian Kraus, is sitting in a van watching live feed from the night goggles and laughs manically. The woman is shot down with an arrow in her leg and falls to the ground. A mysterious red-haired man watches this from the parking lot near the van. The Kraus brothers go near the woman. They check whether she is alive or not. After finding her alive, they attempt to kill her, but out of nowhere, a storm of feathers appears and kills both brothers. Julian Kraus cries his brother's names in grief. Suddenly, the inhuman eye enters the view of the night vision lenses and is shown through his tablet. Julian screams in horror. The next day, the young man, Koku, is walking on top of the peaks of the roofs. He jumps off the three-story building to street level. He walks from the town to the Licky house after buying red bean buns. The young woman, Lily Hashina, works in RIS and runs out of the house. She meets Koku at the door but tells him she is late and drives away in a hurry. She quickly drove to take the ID she left behind. Lily also takes the red bean buns that Koku offers her. Lily arrives at the forest where the Kraus brothers were murdered last night. After surveying the infamous killer bee mark, Lily finds a civilian off the premises. Boris recognizes the civilian as Keith Flick. The team return to RIS, located at the coastal branch. Mario quietly observes the drawer full of books on Keith Flick. She explains that he was a prominent figure in the police world but has now left hands on detective work 10 years ago. Eric introduces Keith, who rejoined the Royal Investigation Service Unit. Eric begins the meeting by telling the names of the dead, Henry and Richard Krauss. He confirmed that both were killed by a sharp blade. The other victim, the woman, was still alive and receiving medical treatment at the hospital. It is revealed that she was abducted and raped by the Krauss brothers. The third brother, Julian, is missing. Eric advises that Killer B's signature was found at the crime scene. He says Killer B has been involved in 15 killings in the past few years. Meanwhile, Lily is trying to analyze something on her tablet, which Keith notices. Julian, in the van, has been taken unsuspectingly to a stranger's house. The door opens, revealing dead bodies in the foyer and the kitchen. The red-haired man enters and finds Julian watching the television. He sees news of his dead brothers. He behaves erratically, deciding to take revenge on those who killed his brothers. The red-haired man offers to help him in return for a favor. Keith goes to visit his childhood friend Gilbert. Gilbert works in the forensics lab, specifically the coastal branch. Gilbert gets excited when Keith enters and calls him Genie. While drinking coffee, Gilbert informs Keith that he has quit smoking. They reminisce about a shared tragic past. Keith notices white orchids surrounding Gilbert's office and leaves. It returns and tosses Gilbert a cigarette pack. Gilbert looks at it and wonders how Keith knew he was lying. Kayla is calling for help from the army in the city. This red IFV is causing a lot of trouble by attacking army convoys. The royal family declared martial law because of the emergency. Killer B is listening in on the team's radio messages. There are 10 people marked with excess, except for the red-haired man and another unnamed man. Mario, Brandon, Lily, and Boris attempt to chase after the red tank, while Julian is screaming to taunt Killer B into revealing himself. The red-haired man is driving the tank while Julian shoots other vehicles trailing them. The red tank releases gas and hides in a tunnel. The group is disposing of the red tank while Julian suspiciously follows the red-haired man. They change vehicles and enter the boat. Police officers are patrolling the area on land and in the air. Eric uncovered this secret hybrid IFV called 5 that hasn't been revealed to the public. Keith thinks that there is a shady military country behind it, developing it in secret. Keith deduces that the perpetrators use the closed Alpha Metro line and are at the Museum of Flight. The red-haired man has stolen a National Freight Train 645. He gets threatened by Julian at gunpoint. Killer B arrives on top of the train to watch Julian but is abruptly sliced by the red-haired man. As he secretly dials a number, Killer B says that he is someone who deserves to die. As Quinn lunges to attack, Killer B rises and reveals his left arm, which turns a dark blue blade. As Killer B hits Quinn's forehead, it turns dark gray and spreads. Quinn eagerly charges, his head sliced in half by the blue blade and disintegrating with a scream. The Minitsuka sits look down at Cremona with a smile. The RIS reaches the train wreck site. Keith examines the blue powder between his fingers. He realizes he got it wrong and that the wreck was the main objective. As Lily complains that Eric is closing the case, Brandon excitedly shares the wreckage viewed from above by Killer B. Killer B says he will not stop killing until he is found. Minitsuki says he has found Killer B. Keith says that he will find him, 
an abandoned farmhouse with three men and one of Killer Bee's targets appears. The one man is talking to a white rabbit until he is kicked into a chamber. An unknown gas spills into the chamber and a man is seen convulsing and vomiting blood. While the other two men laugh, a member with short blue hair sits on the side and places something gold in her mouth. Koku is playing the violin while his co-workers happily listen. Koku says the violin, Gagliano, was crafted 300 years ago. It has been kept in good condition and passed down through generations. He hopes that the recent instruments can be repaired and passed down. The owner of the violin store claps. It is revealed that he is Lily's father, and the other employee is his son. Mario interrupts Brandon and heads out to Assemblyman Ed Kyle's murder scene. Lily is stopping civilians from entering the premises, and Keith says she is doing this intentionally. The assemblyman, famous for taking illegal donations, was found dead with his wife. The infamous Killer Bee signature is written on the wall behind them. Keith informs the team that Killer Bee has not done it but is rather a copycat killer. The team isn't fully convinced until another body is found in an abandoned building. Gilbert confirms that the cause of death was poison gas, the gas that damages the skin, eyes, and lungs. Gilbert says the gas is very refined, and they have asked the Army Institute of Medicine for aid in finding a cure. As Keith gets up to leave, Gilbert asks him about their shared tragic past. Keith says he has gained a clue that will take him to the killer. Gilbert throws a coffee cup in the trash bin. The team begins investigating the mayor's charity ball at Legacy Palace. They find out that the deceased, Ian Reyes, was a senior researcher at Premio Pharmacia. He went missing six months ago. Toku, working with Stella, cuts his hand after hearing the news that the recent killing of Assemblyman Ed Kyle was done by Killer Bee. Lily gulps down her saliva while staring at the pastries. Toku, disguised as a waiter, passes behind her. There is a loud noise in the crowd as a beautiful woman arrives wearing an oran. She is Izanami, part of the Izanami criminals. She is wearing Japan's classical outfits. Eric leaves Kayla in charge of all internal commands in a secure room. He asks for updates from all team members. Keith falls into a fountain after being hit by a car while trying to get a glimpse of some attractive women. Boris is sitting inside the car. He reports nothing abnormal aside from Keith. Kayla watches this all occur outside the building and hums, unimpressed. A voice comes over the radio, saying Area 27 is all clear. Minitsuki and a pink-haired female named Yuna pass behind Koku. They cause both of their eyes to flicker red monetarily. Koku accidentally bumps into Mr. Red who turns out to be one of the people he's after. A mysterious woman in an Warren outfit covers one eye and communicates something to Koku without speaking. Koku gets the message, and his eyes turn red again. Kayla finds an irregular movement from the blonde waiter as he walks toward the mayor. The team runs to protect the mayor. Mario caught the blade before it made contact. He apprehended Mr. Red signals Mr. Blue, who is situated in front of a computer in a room. Everyone is locked in the building, and Mr. Red threatens that the building is filled with poison gas. It will go off at 9 p.m. The only way to disable it is if the mayor is killed. A video of Ian dying is played on the projector for everyone to see. Mario promises that Mr. Red will be remembered as a petty criminal. Kayla is typing away to bypass the building's lockdown command. Meanwhile, Brandon, Lily, and Mario are relaxed, as they know Kayla will free them. On the rooftop, Koku meets Iznami, who watched Ian die on her. She tells Koku that he is the critical puzzle piece, but she will take him dead or alive. She pulls out a hand grenade from under her skirt and blasts it. Keith notices an explosion while sitting in the car. Koku and Iznami are involved in a fight. Keith, who notices strange activities, takes the car and throws Boris in another seat. The people locked inside the building are worried. Mario tried to relax them by speaking to people, but they got angry at him. People demand the truth. The team is worried about getting out of this situation. They were discussing their plan when Mr. Red held them captive and made a wild laugh. He claims to be someone special. Kayla on the computer is doing her work as 27.0 seconds are left. Meanwhile, Iznami, fighting with Koku, shoots a bullet at him. She uses a skateboard when Koku chases her while flying in the air. He is dodging the bullets. She calls someone, telling them the king has landed. Elsewhere Mr. Blue was working on the computer when an unexpected error showed up. Criminal Kamui was on the call with someone. He sees Mr. Blue and slices his neck. There is blood all over the room, including his face. Kayla finds that the other person has stopped counterattacks. She believes it is a trap to confuse them. Eric sees the situation on screen and asks Jean to call the hazmat team. They see the building doors are open, and police forces have arrived. People are happy after getting free. They receive a call from Kayla. Eric is at headquarters with Jean, a bot, and Brody. She informs Eric that the building system is unlocked. 
She is now locating poisonous gas. She tells them something is strange. She says the criminals were attempting to stop her from entering the building's security system, but now they are dark. Eric finds it a trap. A long-haired man, Minitsuki, presses the button to allow the gas to enter the building. People scream when they see gas and become victims of it. People start dying as the gas enters their bodies. Eric gets worried and calls Brandon and Mario names, but nobody is replying. He orders Kayla to divert the gas outside the building. Eric calls Boris, who is in the car with Keith. Keith is following Koku and that lady. Boris is scared, as he does not know what is going on. Eric calls Keith to get back as gas is spread throughout the building. Keith tells him it is fake gas. The criminals are attempting to buy time for their escape. He refuses to return as he is doing important work. Eric finds his words just a theory, but Keith believes it was knockout gas nothing serious. Kamui and Yuna arrive on the rooftop to meet Minitsuki. They inform him that their objective is accomplished. Yuna asks about bringing back their king. Minitsuki wants him back alive. Iznami brings Koku to Lake Lenin. At Lake Lenin, she tries to stir up the memories Koku locked away. They try to tell him about the time they spent together, but Koku fights and defeats her. Before dying, she says Canopus, confusing Koku. Boris asks Keith where they are going, and he replies that he also does not know. Lily wakes up in the building. She finds out that the gas was only to knock them out. Mario says the criminal found poisonous gas but did not use it. It is revealed the dead body sketches are formed on a wall behind poisonous gas, surprising criminals. Lily, Mario, and Brandon are standing on the roof. They are watching the security take people out and take them to hospitals. Lily believes something big is coming, as recent cases are very strange. The three promise they will protect their city from criminals. Keith and Boris were held captive. Keith sees Erika Kazumi flick tortured and killed. She calls Keith's name while dying and expresses her love. Keith wakes up in a room and decides to go to the library. Koku was on the way to the library when he met Lily, who was driving. She takes him in the car and asks where he is heading. She is surprised after hearing Koku is going to the library for research. She believes laptops are an easy way to search for anything online. But Koku thinks otherwise. He asks her about Canopus, which she thinks is a star. She tells him the exact location of the star. Lily recalls his high school boyfriend, who was interested in star things. She tells him about the museum. At the Royal Library, the librarian informs Keith that his library card and ID card are expired. The librarian accepts his request for the renewal of the library card. Keith gets irritated after learning the process, as it is too lengthy. After ordering books, he was going back when Koku entered the library. The two did not see each other. Keith falls on the stairs, and as he does not have much energy, the old man helps him take the bus. After arriving at the building, he finds Lily at his door. She offers him buns, but he refuses to eat. He requests that she get out of her way, but she does not listen. She enters his apartment with him. He goes into the kitchen to make food. Meanwhile, she sits at the dining table and opens the case file. She discusses criminal B. Keith is not interested in listening. She was reading something important when Keith offered him food. She is surprised after seeing that he has made food for him. Boris arrives outside and is surprised to see Lily's car. Keith makes coffee for them and finds that Boris has told her his address. He gets angry at Boris for filling her mind with dubious ideas. She creates a scenario by putting a bun on the table. She explains her theory with the help of those buns. He finds her ideas stupid. She fails to explain her theory to him. He finds the chaos in her head. He gets irritated with her explanations. Keith throws everything on the table and requests that she keep her nose out of this matter. It is not for such idiots to solve it. Boris was listening to their conversation at the door. He hears Keith yelling at Lily. Lily and Keith slip over the noodles and fall to the floor. Boris gets worried and enters the apartment by breaking the door. He accidentally falls on the floor. Two get surprised after seeing Boris here. Lily explains the whole situation, including how they fell and were not involved in any relationships. Meanwhile, Kayla arrives at the apartment. She reveals that Boris sent everyone a message for a party at Keith's place. Keith gets angry at sending group messages. Boris apologizes, as it happened accidentally. The criminal organization is sitting and thinking about the power of Koku Hold. They were talking about Iznami, who was killed by Koku. Meanwhile, the whole team arrived at Keith's house. Keith and Boris were standing at Terrace, discussing Lily. Boris says it's been five years since he met Lily, but he couldn't say she was smart or foolish. He says she is strange but direct. Boris goes inside as the cold increases outside. He stops Kayla from drinking more. Keith meanwhile thinks about Lily. In the office, Brandon was working on the computer when he opened the video. He finds there is a camera near him. He was looking for it when Eric arrived, asking for help. 
He finds Eric Strange and packs his stuff to head out for home. Eric strangely looks at him. After getting out of the office, Brandon calls Boris, who tells him they are sitting at Keith's place. While on call, Brandon sees a royal police officer walking towards him. Brandon hangs up the call and passes that officer. He then looks at the camera. He waits outside the elevator, which is taking time to get open. It opens, and Brandon enters it. Elsewhere, Koku is standing on the top of an abandoned home. While looking at the sky for the Kanapa star, he recalls his memories from when he was a child. He was talking to Inzama and Yuna. In the end, Brandon's body is placed in the elevator. There is blood all over his body and floor. Brandon's body with injuries is found in an elevator with a sign of B on the wall. The team is upset at the attack by their team member. Boris finds out that all security footage of the attack has been erased. This indicates that someone inside them is a traitor. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Brandon is in the emergency room. Lily and Keith are waiting outside. Doctors come out and tell them that the patient is out of trouble. Brandon is now shifted to a room, and Lily goes with him. The doctor then gives Keith a watch, which Brandon handed him before he lost consciousness. He tells him that Brandon wanted him to only give it to Keith. Lily calls Eric to inform Brandon of his condition. Eric calls Lily to the office to help him with the case. Lily is worried for Brandon, but Eric sends his two loyal members. He asks Lily to keep Brandon's condition secret, as they cannot trust anybody outside RIS. Koku arrives at the violin shop in the city. He hears the master talking to the client. He hears an Nzami voice calling to touch Canopus. He looked outside and found Keith walking. He starts having past flashbacks. He gets out and sees Keith with Lily. Keith is looking at the watch and wants to stop at the shop. Lily finds him acting strange since they left the hospital. He says he has to use the bathroom. Inside the bathroom, Keith calls Kayla, asking for some information. Eric also calls Kayla to get an update on recent work. Kayla finds something important on the computer. Koku follows them through RIS headquarters. He enters the headquarters with speed power without getting into security eyesight. Kayla takes Lily inside and asks her for a cell phone. Minitsuki informs his members that Brandon is alive. He tells Kamui to take care of their man inside the headquarters. Kamui then asks for a gold capsule. Minitsuki orders Yuna to delete their program as it will cause problems. He orders Leika to keep an eye on Kamui. Kayla finds that every activity is being recorded through the program. She tells Lily about it and takes her to their security room. She opens the computer and shows how this program is working. They believe someone from a criminal organization is inside the team, leaking all the information. Lily gives ideas for discussing the matter with Keith. Kayla says Keith has ordered a list of all members of RIS from the past five years. They were talking when they found the program had been removed from the computer. Keith was sitting outside the laboratory, thinking about the watch. Gilbert arrives with coffee and offers it to Keith. Keith drinks a small sip but does not like it. Meanwhile, Koku behind the newspaper is listening to their conversation. In the street, Kumui is looking for a golden capsule as he is feeling dizzy. He takes out the capsule, but before he eats it, some thugs take it. One of them takes out a knife and asks for money. Kamui takes his knife and kills him. He also defeats others when Leika arrives. Meanwhile, police also reach the scene but leave them after seeing a sign in Leika's hand. At the RIS headquarters, Keith finds Jean is not at his desk. He arrives at the hospital in Brandon's room. The killer was about to attack him. The killer's face is covered in a hoodie. Keith points a gun at him, stopping him from attacking Brandon. He then reveals all the information hidden in the watch that Brandon wanted to tell him. Through that information, Keith finds that the killer is Gene. The killer removes his hoodie, revealing that Gene is an actual traitor. Keith says he suspected Gene eight years ago after they solved the case. Gene was surprised to learn that Keith had been acting as a friend all those years. Gene says he will kill everyone around Keith to hurt him, as he did years ago. He will kill him at last. He then places a knife in his neck. He starts speaking, and Keith has flashbacks in which he is standing in the court. He was trying to prove himself not guilty of a crime. In the present, he stops Gene from committing suicide. Gene laughs at him and slices his neck with a blade. Keith comes near him when he sees a shadow of Koku. Lily arrives at the hospital with food when he sees Gene's body. She calls security, informing them of the murder. Gene was alive, calling Keith by name, but then died. Keith was sleeping on the bench outside when he woke up and see Koku in front of him. Koku calls him Canopus. Keith finds out who Koku is. He first calls him Killer B and then number 13. Kumui watches Yuna and questions her about everything. She doesn't like him and wants him to go. Elsewhere, Koku makes contact with Keith. Keith questions his wings, which are tied inside his body. Koku tells him he was told to touch Canopus. 
Koku says Canopus is the old star who shows the right path. He asks Keith about Yuna. Keith reveals Yuna is the one Koku got separated from long ago. Keith is curious to know Yuna, noticing the signs Koku is leaving for her. Keith finds Yuna a cold-hearted girl. Koku tells him he only kills those who deserve to die. Keith explains the story behind letter B, which Koku leaves behind after killing someone. Keith says B is 13 in Arabic, and in Roman, it makes 4. It means Koku is 13 and his girlfriend Yuna is 4. Koku leaves marks to show Yuna that he is alive. Koku gets irritated with his word games and asks for Yuna's location. Keith is not ready to reveal anything without getting what he wants. Keith, before leaving, gives time and location to Koku for the meeting the next day. Keith also tells him he will bring something to show him. Boris and his team go to the warehouse where Keith worked for eight years. They saw different file stacks there. Boris says Keith abducted the murderer during his trial from the hospital. Keith tortured him without clearance. Eric tells Kayla that police are suspecting Keith and orders his arrest warrants. Meanwhile, Lily meets Gilbert at his lab. She is confused and comes to see Gilbert. She learned Keith and Gilbert have been friends for a long time. She wants to question him about Keith. Gilbert states that Keith is a lazy man, but he couldn't commit murder. Lily also believes Keith is not guilty. Lily runs away when Gilbert comments that she is the noble, like others who reach out to him. Gilbert resembles her with Erica. Boris meets Keith at the subway station, who is on the run. Boris brings something that Keith needs. Keith relaxes him to not get worried as he is wrapping up things. Yuna gives her word to Minitsuki about capturing Lohengrin. Minitsuki wants to check Lohengrin's abilities. Keith meets Koku at the given location. They introduce themselves to each other. Keith began the story of Koku in the market maker organization. It was the 16th century when 13 skeletons were found in ruins at the top of mountains. Scientists of the time called them fossils of God. The project was started to further investigate and restore gods. The government is involved in the project for personal gain. The government established a research institution named Jala Blanca Royal Scientific. The government gave donations. The highly qualified researchers and technology are called from around the world. The researchers start developing unstable offspring called promising ones. The process repeated itself for several centuries. Those created people were sent to the government. They cause chaos, but only enough so that government forces can clean it up easily. The group is called the market makers. They have a stronghold inside the government. Keith then says he brings the stork towards Koku. Koku hears Yuna calling him when there is fire everywhere. In the present, Koku says he only remembers gunshots and the burning smell of something. Koku asks how Keith knows about all this, and he reveals information about his father. The three biologists were called from Japan to give life to those gods. One of the biologists named Dr. Kazama was Keith's father. He, at the age of 12, decoded that information about God surprising Koku with this information. No sooner than Koku's story is finished does Yuna show up. Her face is covered, and she faces off with Koku. Koku turned black. The only things shown were his hand and eye. Meanwhile, in the background, Minitsuki just watches and is entertained by all that is happening. He calls Koku's blade and eye stolen. Keith watches too. He wants to stop them, but at the same time, he prefers not to be killed. After a lot of fighting, Koku manages to get the upper hand. He was about to kill her but stopped seeing her face. It is revealed that Yuna's memories are altered. She does not have any memories of Koku. The only thing he has is the stolen eye hand, and leg in the deaths of her friends. She goes on and stabs Koku then spells break as Canopus shines. She realizes who she stabbed. She recalls all the memories of them together. Minitsuki then stabs Yuna in the back. Koku, seeing Yuna stabbed, cries in pain. Minitsuki takes Yuna and hits Koku away. He takes the sword from Yuna's back. The twins arrive to deal with Koku. They shot bullets at him. Keith hears the gunfire and takes out his gun. Yuna is unconscious, carried by Minitsuki on his shoulder. Kumui arrives with the blade and slices Koku's body. Meanwhile, Minitsuki, the twins, and Leika were watching this from a distance. Minitsuki orders, and harpoons rain from the sky, stabbing Koku and Kamui. Koku asks Minitsuki to give Yuna back to him. Minitsuki then orders harpoons to haul the two. They cannot control Koku, as he is more powerful. Meanwhile, Keith appears with a gun. He shoots Minitsuki at his hand, which he does not care about. Suddenly, they notice that the arm is getting worse and does not heal on its own. Laker requests that the team leave. The group leaves, and Keith runs to see Koku, who is badly injured. Keith takes Koku in his car. He sees his father's diary, but some pages are missing. He recalls his father's words, who said that a special 13 will sense energy in Keith. He asks him to take care of the last one, who is Koku. 
In a flashback, Koku sees himself protecting Yuna when they were children. The children always bullet him for being weak. He wakes up in Dr. Kazama's room. Koku expresses sadness over being weak. Kazama comforts him by saying that internal strength is bigger than physical strength. Later, Yuna thanks Koku for helping her. He wants to express his love for her, but she does not get it. He then gives them numbers. He gives her the number 4, which will not be an ordinary number but a special one. He tells her that whenever she needs help, she writes this number so he will come to help. They promise they will help each other. It is the reason for writing this number whenever Koku kills someone. Koku finds Yuna missing, and Kazama asks Kirasama to take Koku away as their king. Yuna was trapped in a fire. Minitsuki arrives lying down because he is the older brother of Koku. He takes Yuna with him. Kazama finds that Minitsuki and his Nami are now market makers. Minitsuki kills Kazama. Koku and Kirisama were about to enter the shelter when market makers arrived. Kirisama takes out his blade arm and sends Koku inside the shelter. Later, Koku gets out of the shelter and sees everyone dead. Kazama, whom Koku calls Kanopis, requests that he run away. He gives him some pages from his diary. Koku takes Kazama's bladed arm. Before dying, Kazama gets a message from Keith on his phone. Later, when Inzami arrives and sees Kazami dead, she promises she will take care of Koku. With Koku no longer in a coma, he reveals to us why he didn't remember so much. It is because of his natural power that that sci-fi fisheye of his allows him to reconfigure or outright erase people's memories, which he has never done to others but did to himself, just so he could forget everything but Yuna from his past. However, looking into her eyes forced him to remember everything. At the Royal Police Station, the senior police officer called Eric. He asks about Keith. He gets angry after learning they have not found Keith yet. The officer tells him that if they do not find him, the RIS will be disbanded. Minitsuki is also present in the room. As Eric leaves, Minitsuki tells the officer that Eric does not want to find Keith. The officer gives Minitsuki access to read about RIS's work and process. Later, Minitsuki was tied to the chair. His arm has become worse. Minitsuki questions why only Black Wing God destroys them, but why his arm has gotten worse. Regulus, considered a prophet in the market organization, cuts down Minitsuki's arm. He refuses to answer Minitsuki's questions. At last, it is revealed that Yuna is alive and healing. Police are searching Keith's flat. Lily and Boris are also there. Lily saw the formulas written on the wall, making them look white. She believes it was first written in black and then changed to white. She finds Walls crying for help. She wonders what Keith is searching for. At Cremona Morta Island, Keith is staying with injured Koku. Keith goes out to go fishing. He then makes food for Koku. Koku wants to know why Keith saved him. But Keith wants to ask Koku more questions. After their meal, Keith shows a picture to Koku, asking for recognition. Koku recognizes the man in the picture. Keith explains that his name is Dead Kyle, but others call him the raven-haired murder machine. He is a serial killer. He killed Keith's sister, Erica. During his trial, he was killed by someone. Keith knows Kyle did not kill his sister. However, he wants to know why the dead confessed to murder. He passed the polygraph test. Kyle had complete information about the murder and the weapon used. Keith asks Koku to give him information about Kyle. Koku reveals Kyle was Reggie released into the wild. He was not human. He was a demi-human created for killing only. He was involved in the attack on the Institute in his childhood. Keith learns whoever gets killed by Koku as revenge turns into Reggie. Koku states that on the day of the attack when he saw everyone dead, he promised himself that he would kill everyone involved in the attack. He will find Yuna at any cost. He will not spare anyone involved in that crime. Eric was sitting in a room where Brandon was under observation. He reads articles on market makers and how they manipulate government officials. Eric then looks at the watch Keith gave him. He receives a call from Keith. Eric wants Keith to hand himself, but Keith needs more time. He tells Eric about Killer B. He also informs Eric that Kyle has not killed Erica because he is not human. Eric listens to him but does not believe the things Keith is saying. He requests that Keith return, and together they will solve the matter. Keith says criminals have taken action, and he is prepared. He throws his mobile in the water after thanking Eric for his help. Lily is sitting in Keith's department, trying to decode formulas written on the wall. She shows Boris a picture of a woman appearing on screen after solving that formula. She asked him about the relationship between Keith and that person. Roy's begins to tell her Keith's sister's story. Meanwhile, Keith and Koku are going somewhere. Koku tells him about discarded regas. He says there are a great number of discarded regas in the country. When Reggie turns 20, his powers get out of control. Those are then sent into society. They get a message and turn it into a weapon. 
Keith recalls memories of his sister. Lily, in anger, goes to the office. She meets Eric and asks questions about the investigation. He gets offended and suspends her and calls her an idiot. As Lily leaves, Boris calls Eric to learn about their plan. They plan to send Lily into the open so she would get attacked by market makers. Eric finds a way to trap market makers. However, Boris is worried about Lily getting caught. Eric says he has chosen Lily because her thinking process is similar to Keith's. The only way to find Keith is by using Lily. Eric arrives at the security room to meet Kayla. She is working on something important. Eric asks Kayla to check Lily's location. Boris has attached indicators to Lily's car. Lily goes out of the city with Keith, asking for his location from the locals. Lily then recalls the smell of spices Keith uses. She gets an idea and leaves for a place. At Hall's Island, Koku asks Keith about the blue steel, which is the weak point of Regis. Keith learned it from his father. Koku asks for the reason Keith saved him. Keith reveals he wants Koku's help with something. He is digging into two men, but whenever he finds something, it turns out to be made up. Meanwhile, Boris, Eric, and Kayla find Lily going to Hall's Island. They are surprised to learn Keith is on Hall's Island. Eric orders Kayla to prepare the chopper. Koku gets offended when Keith calls him and Yuna Rajai. Koku believes the two are not Reggie. They go outside to grab something to eat. On the way, Keith tells him he believes Minitsuki and Koku are somehow related. The two have the power to manipulate or change others' memories. The twin regas enter the Kayla system. They find out Lily's location. Meanwhile, Keith and Coco arrived at the cafe to eat dinner. Lily also arrived in the area. Keith says he knows the man, but he is human. He does not understand why humans partner up with Raggy to kill his sister. Koku shows his will to support Keith in getting revenge. Keith says Koku Yuna is kept toward Canopus. They were talking when Lily arrived. She is surprised to see Koku with Keith. They tell her a fake story to convince her. Lily reveals she knows about his sister Erica. She also discovers Keith ignores her because she looks like his sister. Market makers also arrived on Hall's Island. One of the twins of the market makers attacked Keith's house on Hall's Island. They got the location by entering the Kayla computer system. Keith, Koku, and Lily were talking when they heard the sound of bullets. Koku turns his arm into a blade, surprising Lily. Koku slashes Takaru in such a way that they become dust, and Minitsuki, after being threatened, chokes Kyukuri to death. After eight hours at the Royal Police Station, they have kept Keith in custody. Keith finds out they tracked him through Lily. Eric entered the room to question Keith. He asks for Keith's in game. The team is watching them through a camera. Keith tells Eric everything is happening under his nose. The market maker is using their position for his benefit. They are committing murders out of self-interest. They also killed his sister in the same way. Keith wants to let people know about them. However, Eric says they hold a strong position in the country. Keith says the murderer has been following the same pattern for almost eight years. Eric bursts at him after waiting for eight years to uncover the truth. He yells at him for his laziness. He suddenly realizes his mistake and apologizes to him. Eric explains to other team members what happened eight years ago. Eric planned to kidnap Kyle from the hospital. However, Keith left him in the middle and went on his own. Eric found himself in a difficult position. Eric believes he was alone at that time and did not have many options. Eric says now Keith has the whole team. He asks Keith to give them orders, which they will follow to uncover the truth. Eric cannot leave Keith, as he is a suspect. He wants him to give them orders. Eric decides to use Lily as a decoy, but Boris finds it risky. Lily is ready to do anything. Keith thinks Gilbert may be the head of the market makers since that person seemingly has too much of an interest in him. Plus, when he bugged the cigarettes he gave Gilbert, he heard him speaking to Erica, and that was all he needed. As for convincing others and presenting this idea, he has absolute proof that is the issue. To find the truth, Keith makes stars at the shoulder of Lily. He then sends Lily to Gilbert's room for signatures. Gilbert sees stars at her back and behaves strangely. Later, he goes inside to talk to Erica but does not get a reply from her. Meanwhile, the other twin, Kyukuri, gets furious at Minitsuki. She calls him a death angel. Her sister died due to him. Minitsuki gets angry and holds her by the neck. She dies, and he throws him away. The setup is to make Lily as similar to Erica as possible, to the point where they can get the evidence they need from Gilbert. Lily is standing at the bus stop, so Gilbert gives her a ride. 
Boris has a bad feeling but is doing it on the order of Eric. The team is watching Lily from the side of the building. Gilbert arrives and offers a ride according to the plan. Mario and Boris follow the car by following the tracking device. Lily behaves like Erica to trigger Gilbert's memories. However, Lily screws it all up by playing techno music, which Erica didn't listen to, thus snapping Gilbert out of his trance and catching on to what he figures Keith is up to. And yet, he almost loses two people. Mario and Boris were tracking Lily but ended up following two completely different people. One was Kamui, and there was another person they did not know. The two were Regas. Kamui, who has bombs strapped to them, nearly kills Boris and Mario. The team gets worried as all signals are lost. Sometimes later, the team hears from Boris and Mario. They are alive and a little injured. The team says Gilbert Burt was not there. He switched places with Raggy when he stopped for a car wash. He has been doing it for eight years. Eric wants to hire someone, but Keith convinces him to go with the same plan. He takes responsibility for Lily's safety. Gilbert is a bit upset with Keith, and since he wants to play with his emotions, it seems he is going to take that out on Lily, first by carving her up and then leaving her for Keith to find. Koku is on his way to Moby Dick, Aka Canopus, which is the head of Market Maker's operations. Koku remembers the plan Keith explained to him on Hall's Island. He shows the way through. He reaches above the ground and can follow Canopus in the sky. There is a ship hidden among the stars. The ship was built during the war and called Moby Dick. Keith believes Yuna is on that ship. Keith explains the passage and tale of the two shrine maidens. On the night of the 13th full moon, the man who was chosen by two shrine maidens gains power, companions, and wings. He becomes a black-winged king. His blade turns blue. Koku believes that if their actions are driven by those maiden shrines, Yuna will die in the end. Keith encourages him to follow this path and not get scared of the future. Koku then arrives at the northern cliff to leave for Moby Dick. Meanwhile, Yuna wakes up, and her memories come back. She doesn't feel right. Minatsuki arrives to explain her mission, but she gets angry at him. Minatsuki slaps her for yelling at him. Minatsuki says Koku cannot reach that ship. His wings will not allow him. They will get burned with ice. Yuna is sure Koku will come. Eric and Keith are figuring out the map to guess which street Gilbert will use. They have not reached any conclusions yet. Eric says they do not have much time. Kayla then interrupts them. She uses a crowd navigation app. Through this, they will be able to highlight the cars that are acting strangely. Eric helps Kayla set that app on traffic. Kayla, using her computer, finds out the location of Ramon Harbor. Keith tells them this is the military harbor and off for public transportation. They find out there is a Ramon psychiatrist hospital where Kale died. Meanwhile, Lily is acting unconscious and lying among dead bodies in front of Gilbert. He tries to scare her by placing a knife on her wrist. Kayla figures out that there are dead bodies in that hospital that are not claimed by anyone. Keith remembers things and meetings with kills. He realizes people he has seen taking the golden pill, which were Regas. Keith tries to decode the pattern of how dead bodies were transferred to the lab through Regas. He asks Kayla to enter Gilbert's lab logs through her computer. Kayla finds that, according to logs, Gilbert Burt is still in the lab. He also reveals that 37 times Gilbert Burt stayed late at the lab. There are 37 dead bodies of women that resemble Erica in that lab. They check the structure of their building and find Gilbert Burt's lair. Keith believes he has two people working for him. Eric and Keith go into Gilbert's lab to find a hidden door. After checking the whole room, Keith pushes the skeleton wall. The wall gets out, showing the way to the basement. The two enter inside. Through the elevator, they reach the basement. The two are surprised after seeing dead bodies. Keith finds the dead body of Albert Ozzo, the chief executive of the Jala Blanca organization. He is the father of Gilbert Burt Ross. He is the first to get killed by Gilbert Burt. Eric is surprised to learn that all 37 people were killed by Gilbert Burt. He asks Keith for Gilbert Burt's plan for doing all this. Keith also does not know. Keith says for Gilbert Burt, killing is not a big deal. He touches the blood on the table and tells Gilbert to kill someone. After some days, someone else takes the blame and then commits suicide. The same cycle has been repeating for the last eight years. Keith receives calls from Gilbert Burt. He was laughing at Keith for becoming a fool all these years. Keith decodes his plan in front of him. Keith gets the location of Lily. He orders Kayla to lock the security system of the building. They get Lily drugged up, but with the pill hanging from her lip, which means she is just knocked out. Gilbert is now on the run, and Keith catches up to him quicker than he anticipated. With Keith a little too close for comfort, Gilbert wants to hit the nuclear button. He wants all those with ties to the royal police eliminated. He kills all of them. He calls Minitsuki, but he doesn't answer the phone, but Leika answers the call. As Minitsuki and Yuna argue, 
he tells Gilbert to go screw himself. This reveals Gilbert isn't fully what people thought he was. Koku flies in the sky to find Moby Dick. It is snowing everywhere. Meanwhile, Keith in his apartment takes out the box from the cupboard. He loads his gun and gets out of the apartment. Outside, it's snowing, and he looks at the sky. On the other hand, Lily is lying unconscious in a hospital bed. She has blurry memories of Keith telling her something. She wakes up and finds Brandon sitting in the room. She first confuses Brandon with Keith, but after finding him, Brandon asks for clothes. Minitsuki tortures Yuna when she says Koku will come. Laker reads about the full moon night when he hears the alarm as someone is near the ship. Meanwhile, Koku arrives near the ship and finds it hidden among the stars. Minitsuki was about to stab her with his blade when Leika arrived. He informs him about the alarm. Minitsuki is surprised to learn Koku is coming. He decides to kill himself. Leika sees Minitsuki's strange behavior as he is not in his senses. Koku arrives inside the ship and faces off against Minitsuki, who is waiting for this time. He wants to take everything from Koku and then become the god of every creation. Meanwhile, the royal forces are analyzing the dead bodies they found in Gilbert's hidden lab. Boris finds out the facility was run by different people. Lily calls Boris, and he puts the phone on speaker. Eric, Mario, and Boris were listening to her. She asks about Keith, whom the three believe is at the hospital. Eric rushes out after learning Keith has gone on his own without informing them. The fight begins between Minitsuki and Koku. Koku's upper hand breaks Minitsuki's blade. Minitsuki had flashbacks and realized he was Reggie. It was surprising for Koku to find it. In flashbacks, Minitsuki sees a girl who altered his memories. He questions who Koku is, and he does not know anything about himself. Meanwhile, Leika takes Yuna and leaves the ship on a chopper. He had placed a bomb on the ship. The counting has already started. Koku sees Minitsuki's body turned into sand. He looks for Yuna inside the ship and finds symbol 13 merged with 4. He learns Yuna is waiting for him. Leika lands the helicopter and looks at the sky. He sees Moby Dick get distraught with an explosion. Keith takes the train and leaves for somewhere. On the train, he calls Gilbert, who recalls their school memories together. Gilbert is sitting in the building where he killed Erika. Gilbert reveals that he instructed Minitsuki to kill Kazama. The RIS team is trying to reach KK, Keith. They are sitting in one car. Lily says Keith goes to the place where Erika's murder happened. They are unsure about the exact murder location. Koku manages to save himself, but his blade is broken from his arm. He is moving on snow, leaving blood drops. He is in search of Yuna. Meanwhile, Leika has tied Yuna to a wall. He is trying to make a black figure on the wall to become a black-winged king. It is revealed that Leika is the real Minitsuki. Gilbert helped him take one eye from Koku. Koku had two special eyes, but one was stolen. He was the real Reggie, showing no instability. Leika removes his glasses to reveal his eye. He then stabbed Yuna, making her scream. Koku rushes to the scene when he hears Yuna's scream. He remembers Keith's words to not go jet black near that wall. The reason is that this is the place where the first black-winged king died. It will become the reason for Koku's death. Koku turns his body color into white. Yuna cries, and Leika asks the reason behind her tears. He is enjoying seeing her cry. It gives him inner satisfaction. He tells her he waited for that death because Koku will arrive there shortly. According to Leika, Yuna and Koku will die there, as written in the inscription. Leika will be reborn as the new black-winged king. Keith asks Gilbert for the reason for killing his father. Gilbert says his father began agreeing with Dr. Kazama. He got sentimental in his old age. Gilbert found him less usable for the production of regas, and with that hurting the power of the market makers. He killed his father. Keith decodes the plan that girl kept Minitsuki alive because, when he killed someone, he wanted Reggie to remove all memories of that person. Reggie makes the person confess to the murder. He then orders market makers to clean up the mess. After listening to this, Gilbert compares himself with Keith. Gilbert is exploiting Reggie, and Keith is exploiting Koku. Keith stops him from comparing himself with Keith. Koku arrives at the location. He yells at Leika for stabbing Yuna. The two begin fighting. At first, Leika gains the upper hand. Koku gets injured, and they will not heal here on this hollow ground. He then shoots bullets at him when Koku says he will fight destiny. Gilbert was explaining his theory when Keith put a gun to his forehead. Gilbert asks me to shoot him. The RIS team is in the car, reaching out to Keith. They find out about the island where Keith and Gilbert grew up. Eric believes it was all set up by Gilbert to manipulate them. They want the team to use their minds and stay focused. Gilbert recalls their discussion before the end of their summer break during high school. Gilbert asked Keith for one thing he hated most, and Keith replied with murder. Gilbert took it personally and cried. He felt like getting apart from Keith. Gilbert felt like a rejection. 
when paired with Erica rejecting him for another man. That is what led to Gilbert's snapping. Erica was one of the ways Gilbert tried to remain sane. The team arrives at the building. Lily runs to stop Keith from shooting. Gilbert also takes out his gun, pointing at Keith. Gilbert Burt noted that he cried when Keith rejected him and was disgusted by the idea of murder. Gilbert wants Keith to understand him and ultimately shoot him. That rejection, which happened more than a decade ago, still eats at him, to the point that even if he has to push Keith to shoot him for a kill, including a headshot, as long as he can get a few seconds of knowing Keith understands the pleasures of murdering someone. Koku gets injured by Leika. He hangs him on the wall with a sword inside him. Koku screams when Leika stabs Yuna. Koku manages to free himself. He takes out the blade leg, which was given to him by his Nami. He kills Leika with a leg blade and saves Yuna from dying. The rest continue to live on. After three months of the news talking about all Gilbert did and the stuff he was connected to, it is assumed things will be normal now. Koku and Yuna are living a fairly normal life. Keith is going back to work on Lily's car. On the way she talks about Erica, Keith says she was adopted. Keith believes Gilbert Burt is the real winner in all of this. Lily offers rides to Yuna and Koku on the way. 